We do get the last word. I get the last word. The people do. Because it's our burden. And that's why we get the last word. And it's a burden I embrace. It's the burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Jennifer Crumbly is guilty of involuntary manslaughter. It's not a burden that I have to prove every single fact about the case beyond a reasonable doubt. That's not the law. That's what she told you the law was. It's not the law. The law is I have to prove every element beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Not any doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. The defense gets to decide how they present their case. They get to decide that. She gets to stand up and say what she said. But your job is to listen to the facts of the case. Your job is to listen to what the judge tells you the law is. Your job is to tell you to look, look, look at the evidence, the people sitting here. Not what somebody else wants to have said that they said, but what they actually said. Your job is to consider not what lawyers say about their own life and their own circumstances and their opinion. Your job is to consider the facts and the evidence in this case. I have to address a couple things and I'm going to be quick. There was absolutely no evidence uh, at all presented to you that anybody at that meeting told Jennifer Crumbly it was no big deal. There was no evidence of that. There was no evidence at all that Jennifer Crumbly was very surprised by how long the meeting lasted. Jennifer Crumbly didn't say that. That's not into evidence. I don't have to prove, the people do not have to prove that Jennifer Crumbly knew that there was going to be a homicide or a school shooting. As Lieutenant Willis pointed out correctly, if she knew exactly what was going to happen, she'd be charged with murder, ladies and gentlemen. She is not. She is charged with involuntary manslaughter. And the elements, you'll get them. I read them to you. The standard and what I have to prove is not that she knew that her son would go shoot up the school and kill four kids. I have to prove that she had a legal duty, she negligently performed that legal duty, she negligently did not take steps to take care and protect the other children in that school when there was a reasonable foreseeability that ordinary care was required. The smallest of things the smallest of things. I apologize to the law enforcement in this room and any listening that I have to stand here and to defend their integrity, but I do. Because if you believe that Special Agent Brandon and Lieutenant Willis and the other law enforcement that took the stand here, including Including, I, I'm objecting because I'm allowed to argue based on what's in evidence, and Miss McDonald is trying to make me sound like I've done something wrong, and I didn't. I my argument was proper. She's arguing. I mean, she's arguing. It's, it's my it's my rebuttal. Yeah. And, uh, over, overruled. You commented. You commented on the statements of the police officers. You argued about the statements of the police officers. She gets to argue about the statements. The exact quote was, they probably did that to all the witnesses in the case. If you believe that, then you believe that the sheriff's office, Lieutenant Willis, Special Agent Brandon, the ATF, the federal marshals, the De Detroit Police Department, anyone who, who the, the, the evidence tech, they were all in some sort of conspiracy. That's what you'd have to believe, and I know that that's not what you're going to find. Look at the evidence, apply the law, and decide what the truth is. That's all I've ever asked you to do. That's all the judge is going to ask you to do. Nothing here was designed. Nothing here was made up. And I don't have to convince you of that, because I know that you're going to use your, your hearts and your minds and your sense of reason, and you're going to look at the evidence. The first statement Jennifer Crumbly makes about this gun, her son's gun, was at the substation after the shooting. 
and this is what she said. It was hidden. It was hidden. That's what she said. It was hidden, ammunition, sep ammunition separately. It was hidden in a dresser. It was hidden. That's all she said about it. The school's actions or inactions do not excuse the culpable behavior by defendant. Ladies and gentlemen, he literally drew a picture of what he was going to do. He drew a picture. It says, help me. It has the drawing of the gun that she bought him, posted and bragged about. Blood everywhere. The thoughts won't stop. The world is dead. She, he drew her a picture. Pretty, pretty egregious and unique circumstances. And in fact, it is absolutely not true that we have to worry that we'll all be sitting here. We agree on one thing. Her testimony is evidence. Jennifer Crumley's testimony is evidence. And you should consider it. And when you consider it, I'm confident that you will agree it is not consistent at all. It wasn't even consistent from her direct examination to her cross-examination. She acknowledged sitting here when Mr. Keyes asked her about, where is this phone? You said you took the phone. You heard what she said. We took his gun away. We took his gun away. I don't have to prove flight beyond a reasonable doubt. I already told you that. You, you, can, you can infer consciousness of mind. And what does that mean? You run, you delete text messages, and you lie because you know she knew she did something wrong. <clears throat> the question about why Jennifer Crumley didn't take one of these small, small actions Secure the gun. Find out where the gun is. It looms large in this courtroom. There is no one it looms larger for than the victims and the family members of those kids who were killed on that day. We don't have to prove why. But remember what she said. I wouldn't change a thing. Just hours ago, she said, I wouldn't change a thing. This prosecution is about nothing else except the facts of this case and what Jennifer Crumley did and what she didn't do. If only I could look at the faces of these parents who are dealing with unspeakable darkness and grief. If only I could make that better, I could appease them, as defense counsel suggests, by, by charging Jennifer Crumbly. These are the parents of Hannah St. Juliana. These are the parents of Madison Baldwin. These are the parents of Tate Muir. These are the parents of Justin Schilling. And not just their parents, they are mothers and they are fathers and they are sisters and their brothers. And do not think for one second that this prosecution takes any of that pain away because it doesn't. This isn't an effort to appease anybody. Your verdict means one thing. It means Jennifer Crumbly is guilty. Four counts of involuntary manslaughter beyond a reasonable doubt. And I am not going to stand here and tell you that that's going to take away this pain that these families feel because it will not. I won't stand here and say that the pain will be gone from Molly Darnell or Christy Gibson Marshall or Special Agent Brandon who ran out of that office so quickly that his chair was spinning or Ed Wagrowski who viewed the surveillance video to identify the path of the shooter and it was burned in his brain forever or for Lieutenant Tim Willis who answered the call to lead and maybe the biggest ass of his entire career, but one he did not back away from. Don't 
render this verdict for the hundreds of kids in that school, it will not appease them. Nothing will. But you are not called upon. You are called upon. You are called upon to do your part as jurors, to keep the oath that you took to be fair, to be honest, to be impartial. You are the ultimate fact finder. But what happened that day? You are the ultimate fact finder of the truth. We have met our burden. We have proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Jennifer Crumley is guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter for failing to ex exercise ordinary care when the smallest, tragically simple thing could have prevented it. It could have saved Hannah. It could have saved Madison. It could have saved Tate. And it could have saved Justin. And she sat here and she said she wouldn't do one thing different. And lastly, I'm going to, I'm going to address the question I know that's on the minds of a lot of people in this courtroom and a lot of people listening. I'm going to say what I know they're all asking and they want to say. When she took the stand and she testified about her own loss and she was asked the question, you lost everything, she said yes. She hasn't lost everything, ladies and gentlemen. Her son is still alive. Find her guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Thank you.